Hey everyone, Eric Thompson here. Hope that you are doing well. Welcome back to the channel. I wrote a letter of sorts to Tori for Valentine's Day, and she gave me permission to share it with you here. As the title of this video suggests, the letter is called and titled Valentine's Day, a most troublesome holiday. Here it is. Valentine's Day has always been a troublesome holiday for me. Growing up, I was taught and thusly understood that Valentine's Day was an occasion to share love with others. As a boy, I brought Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Valentine's Day cards to school and passed them out to my friends along with candy hearts that bore sweet three to four word sentiments. It was fun, and that's just fine. Then I became a young man and started to sense the need for companionship. Suddenly, my eyes were open to a new side of Valentine's Day, one that decorated with roses and chocolates and jewelry and tender expressions of romantic love. Gone were the days when a perforated card and a bag of sweets would suffice. Suddenly, it meant much more, and I felt like I was missing out. I spent many Valentine's Days feeling quite left out as I never had a sweetheart to share it with. Indeed, I felt it was a holiday that criticized me for being alone and lonely, and chocolates from mom and dad never quite felt like a proper fulfillment of what that troublesome holiday was meant to be. Here I started to feel what many men must feel when February 14 rolls around. Guilt. Those who have sweethearts feel guilted into gift-giving. That's what men do on Valentine's Day, after all, and those who don't are saddened that they don't have anyone to share the sentiment with. Those with sweethearts are overjoyed for another chance to spoil their significant other, and those who are alone and lonely try to escape the bitterness of their solitary plight by criticizing the holiday itself. The betrothed and affianced rejoice and the lonely hold their breath for the dawn of February 15th. Hugs and kisses and chocolates and special dinners for some, furrowed brows and envy and jealousy for others. All of this is quite reasonable, and I've stood on both sides of the table long enough to genuinely appreciate the struggle from both parties. I've spent far more Valentine's Days I'll only count those in my relationship-conscious years alone, that I have someone special. I've even tried to play in between the lines by asking a close girl friend who was single if she'd be my valentine. If she obliged me, then we'd do something special, but not necessarily romantic, to enjoy the day with one another, but mostly to escape that feeling of loneliness that would arise and reside if we hadn't done anything at all. In those occasions, friend to friend were a delight. But now I am neither a child, or a frustrated teenager slash tween slash young adult. I'm married to an astonishingly wonderful woman and have a daughter who is, in no uncertain terms, the most beautiful child on earth besides slippers. <laughs> and here is where the troublesome transforms into more trouble. Now I'm in the shoes of a husband who has to grapple with the, with the realities of a Valentine's Day, a reality I'd never experienced before December 2012 when Tori and I got married. Valentine's Day of 2013 was a breeze. Tori and I had just found out that we were pregnant and we were already on cloud one through nine. No chocolates necessary to elevate our love for each other or our gratitude to God. But here's the honest truth about my 2014 Valentine's Day. I'll take a drink of water so I get it all right. I don't know what to do for Tori. I'm going to spend most of the day with a friend at a concert, which we've been planning for some time, away from my wife and my child. On top of that, I'll be away from her most of the weekend with work-related events. 
this adds another degree of frustration since we really do want to binge watch the, ne the new season of House of Cards. We'll save that for next week. And I know that Tori has some gifts in store for me, but I haven't gotten anything for her. We had previously discussed not getting each other gifts, but that still feels like an inexcusable excuse in my book. In short, Valentine's Day probably won't look like Valentine's Day at all, and I'm suddenly in the party of guilty husbands who will fail to provide holiday musts for their wives. Somehow, I feel I'm with the majority of husbands who either forgot about the occasion or simply don't know what to do. Maybe I'm with a minority of the aforementioned party who want to do something but find chocolates, flowers, teddy bears, and jewelry unworthy gifts of our exceptional beauties. And this is bad news for me and I'm trying to feel the guilt as best as I can. But I'm also struck by some very good news that this troublesome holiday can't touch. 1. No husband should need a special day to do special things for his wife. February 14th or October 2nd, we are always compelled to act with the highest degree of kindness for our year-round sweethearts. 2. Acts of kindness are more often appreciated when unexpected. Maybe Tori expects me to send flowers or buy chocolates, but I know that she appreciates those gestures more when they're unexpected, and especially when they arrive when she needs them instead of when she expects to receive them. 3. I'll be honest with Tori about my guilt and frustration. She'll have read every word of this reflection before it's ever shared, and I'll make sure she knows that any omission of gift-giving isn't due to lack of care or concern, but because my love for her doesn't vacillate between dates on the calendar. And finally, my true gift to her is my love and honesty and the fullness of my heart. This is the gift I strive to give her every day. The troublesome holiday can't be, it won't be, a once-a-year opportunity to do so. Nor will anniversaries, nor will birthdays, nor will Christmas, or Easter, or Halloween, or Arbor Day, or any other blip on the 365-day radar by which we've erected so much ceremony and tradition in our culture. No, this is the day equal to all others, in which I'm going to give my sweetheart my beating heart and blazing love. As I go into this year's Valentine's Day, I'll offer a variation of that famous poem that Sir Edmund Spencer famously penned and then lost absolute control over. <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue, tomorrow's just a day and every day is for you. Thou art my love, and I am thine. No presents to offer, no chocolate to supply. The lot was cast, and I drew you. From now until forever, from now until forever. Happy Friday, sweetheart. I love you.